So in the previous demos, we've seen how Vagrant works to provision an infrastructure, then Docker Compose to run and provision containers, and Ansible to actually go ahead and configure the applications and so on. Now we can also use Ansible for provisioning on the cloud infrastructure of the cloud infrastructure as well, but there is a specialized or there is more like a generic tool uh, which works with multiple cloud platforms, and that is called as Terraform. So we are going to use Terraform or I'm going to show you a demonstration of using Terraform to provision a complete cloud infrastructure and that infrastructure would include building a virtual private cloud that's like your own perimeter on top of a public cloud and I'm going to take an example of AWS cloud here and inside that VPC I would be creating four subnets so I would be dividing that network into four subnets, two of those will be public. Let me call it as P1, P2. And two of these would be private. So PVT1 and PVT2. So I would be dividing it into four subnets and on top of that, I would be launching one. It would also configure everything needed for the network itself, including the security firewalls and uh, key pairs and security groups and network ACLs and so on. And then on top of that, it would run one instance. So I would also be launching an instance uh, that is an EC2 instance that's on AWS using Terraform. However, Terraform can also be used to talk to other cloud platforms, let's say Azure or GCP or you know, you name it, and Terraform already almost already has a provisioner or provider for that platform. So let's have a look at how Terraform works. Okay, so back to the demo setup again. And it's the same repository for Terraform as well. You can see the Terraform code here. Uh, just like Ansible, there are multiple files, but this time it's not YAML. Terraform has its own language called as HCL. HCL stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. And if you observe this time, it is the configuration for the cloud, you know, resources like a virtual private cloud here or VPCs as it is called. Uh, then you can see, you know, a bunch of resources for AWS key pairs, security groups, and there's an instance configuration, which is nothing but a server configuration. You might also see some variables where you can define, you know, um, the data, you know, the configuration that you want to create it with, like, let's say the image name, the key pair, the instance type, and the server type, and so on. And this is my AWS cloud console. What I want to show you here is I'm in the in the particular region called as Singapore and if I go there, I have nothing, almost nothing here in this region. So this is completely a clean state right now. If I go to EC2, which is nothing but the server's console, I see nothing there either. The reason why I want to show you here is I want to provision certain cloud resources automatically this time with Terraform. So Terraform is going to connect to AWS and provision everything that I would need as per the specifications I have written here. Again, what I write here are not the scripts. They are just the declarative definitions of the resources that I need in a particular region of, let's say, Amazon Web Services cloud platform. And one of the very useful features of Terraform and which stands it apart from other generic to other tools like Ansible is this plan utility. Terraform plan compares the current state of the cloud resources with the code that you have and it finds if there are any differences or drifts in the configurations and accordingly shows up what resources need to be updated, created, deleted before you actually apply that configuration, which is extremely, extremely useful. Ansible or tools like that have um, dry runs, but that, that is definitely not as good as, you know, showing you each and every granular detail about every property of every resource. And that's quite useful feature of Terraform. Very useful, especially for cloud provisioning, because with cloud, you have to be really careful with the amount of resources that you create and change, etc. 
and now I'm going to use Terraform apply and this command will actually start making changes. So what it is doing right now is it's reading the code that I have in the current directory and then it says that I'm going to create 17 resources. Should I go ahead and do that? And that's where I would say yes now. You can also have auto approve set. So if you want to run it automatically, you can also add one option to that. And this is a time when it would start making changes and it's creating a bunch of resources. It's, cre it's gonna create a virtual private cloud, the network, you know, the private subnets, the security groups, access control lists, um, and it is gonna launch an instance inside that secure virtual private cloud. And that's what it is doing right now. Wow, I have spent hours and hours creating this kind of infrastructure and with Terraform, I don't have to make any efforts at all. I just have to run a code and then maybe grab a coffee and by the time I'm back, it is all ready. And it has launched everything so if i refresh now i should see all my resources i can see the vpc subnets four of those uh, there are a bunch of other resources created which were necessary for running this infrastructure some dependencies and i can see everything right there available including my ec2 instance which is nothing but a server on this cloud platform and that is fantastic and just like this terraform has a capability talking to different platforms different cloud providers including azure and gcp and uh, there are a bunch of other providers including even kubernetes and uh, many other different types of applications so you can provision and configure resources on multiple different platforms and the amount of resources available with terraform are just amazing as well and just like docker and docker compose and vagrant you can use terraform destroy to delete everything again this is another best part about uh, terraform and infrastructure as a code and automation in general that again uh, there, there have been so many times that i might have forgotten a particular resource when i delete it with Terraform, I never have to bother about it because whatever was created would get deleted with Terraform Destroy. And this time I'm going to use Auto Approve. You could also use this Auto Approve while launching those resources with Terraform Apply. Well, let's wait till it deprovisions. And it knows in which sequence it needs to go ahead and delete stuff because you know there are some dependencies you cannot delete certain configuration certain resources unless you delete others which are uh, you know which it depends on or which are blocking it there I go everything is clean again just like how I started before launching that terraform apply and if I go back to EC2, I should see that instance being terminated. It's been terminated as well. Again, these were the demos of some of the infrastructure as a code tools. And I hope you realize the potential of automation and DevOps by now.